Regan's Corner fans into here in Regan's Corner land. Next stop, we have a great interview with one of the best soccer players in the WAC conference, Isabella Stewart for you from Utah Valley. Isabella, how's it going? How's it popping? And how is it going for you, girl? <laughs> It's going great, you know. Um, just been at school, and then we are traveling to Portland tomorrow. So, got a lot of fun things going on right now. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you just got a calculus class, and yes. you're talking about, <laughs> about to talk about your story. I mean, it's about to be fun up in here. You know what I'm saying? But how did yes. you start in soccer? Oh man, I will have to credit that to my dad. Um, so actually, he served a mission for our church, and he was over in Italy. And he didn't even really know about soccer until he went over there. And he was there when the World Cup was going on in Italy. And so he fell in love with soccer. And so me being the first kid of the family, he's like, okay, I'm sticking a soccer ball at her feet, and she better run with it. And luckily I did. Um, I started when I was like three years old, I believe. I had no idea what I was doing, obviously. <laughs> But um, my mom tells me that I was like, Mom, when's it my turn with the ball? Like, I just did not get it yet. But um, I loved it and stuck with it. And, you know, I kind of, my dad kind of saw that I really loved it. And so he's like, okay, like, let's move you into rec. So started just doing rec soccer and just playing for fun. And I love duking people and scoring goals. And I was like, this is really fun. And my dad's like, well, what do you want to do with soccer? Like, how serious are you about it? I'm like, oh, I want to play for the national team, Dad. I want to play for the national team. He's like, okay, like, that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> so after rec, he's like, okay, well, she needs to get on the club team. So uh, I started playing for a club down in Arizona. I'm from Arizona. Um, they're called FC Barcelona Total Football Club, and they kind of based their style of play off of, like, the big club in um, FC Barcelona. And so they kind of like were a lot of possession style, um, very technical. And so I started playing there and I would kind of alternate um, in years. One year I'd play with the girls team and then another year I'd play with the boys team. So I kind of was playing with both teams and it was really good to get the different styles of soccer because girls are a little bit different with playing. But <laughs> let's get into the kind of your club scene and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so as I was talking about, um, I was kind of bouncing between playing with a girls team and a boys team um, just because my dad, you know, he, he was kind of with me every step of the way. And so he really saw like the value of playing with girls and guys. And it's just different experiences. And so it gave me different tools and different tactics um, as I was going through that. And so I was playing with um, FC Barcelona, the football club there, and they ended up breaking up and joining different clubs. And so then that kind of got a little bit crazy for me. And at that point, I was like, okay, well, where should I go? Who should I follow? Um, should I go with the boys team coach or with the girls team coach? Because they both went to different clubs. And so I was kind of conflicted at that point. And so I decided to go with my girls team coach and I was playing with them. And at that point in time, the team just wasn't the same. And I was kind of at this point um, losing my love for soccer. I kind of went, out, went through like a burnout phase, I would say. It was probably around anywhere from age 15 to about 16, which is not very good for a soccer player because around that age, that's when you're getting heavily recruited and um, you kind of need to be pushing on the gas at that point. And so at this point, I was kind of like, OK, you know what? I'm taking a step back from the club that I'm playing with in Arizona. I'm going to be training with my dad on my own and we're going to see if I still really love the game and have the same drive and passion for it. And so. It took me about maybe a couple months, and my dad kind of suggested that I maybe um, try to guest play with a team over in California. Um, and I don't know if you've ever heard of the player um, Ashley Hatch, but she's played um, on the national team, and then she also plays um, in the NWSL. Um, she's doing very well. And so she, um, she played with a club in um, California, and we were family friends with them. They had moved to Arizona, and they got us in touch with this club called Legends FC in California. And so my dad was like, listen, like, you don't have to go crazy, but why don't you just try playing, guest playing with them, like, every so often? And I was like, okay, 
I might as well. I mean, I still loved soccer, but it wasn't like I had this drive to maybe go play college or to maybe play professional at all. So because, okay, like, let's do that. And so I started guest playing with them and I entered into my junior year. And at that point, I was like, okay, you know what? I can't see myself like not playing soccer. Like I just, I need to put the gas on and like go back and train super hard. And I really want to look at colleges. And meanwhile, colleges were still reaching out to me. They were maybe D2, D3, um, kind of schools that I was just like not super interested in. But I was like, oh, you know what? We're going to keep playing and see what turns up. And so I started working hard again and um, playing a lot of games with mm-hmm. still the team in California, which was great because California is, has a very high level of play for soccer. So I was playing with them um, for a while and all of a sudden COVID hit (laughs) and that threw a huge wrench in my plans. And with, I mean, plenty of players across, you know, America and everywhere, you know, it kind of put everything at a halt. And so that was really tough for me to have to keep training and not playing with my team at all and just training with my dad and having to keep work hard, working hard with like maybe no end in sight with COVID and being like, well, maybe my dreams of playing college soccer won't happen at all. And so it was really hard to stay motivated at that point, but I kept working and kept pushing. And um, eventually senior year came around and college coaches couldn't, couldn't really stay, um, see you come play. But I, we were able to play games at that point. So I was getting game film and trying to send it out to coaches. And um, our college coordinator at Legends, he ended up sending my film to Chris LeMay, which is our head coach here at Utah Valley. And he saw the film. He called me up. He, well, at first he texted me and he texted me. He's like, Hey, I saw your film. Like, I want to give you a call. Let me know when it works for you. And and when I first saw that text, I was like, Oh my goodness, like Utah Valley, like a D1 school, a school that I'm like super interested in. And I was like, Okay, like this is it. And I had other D1 schools reach out to me to come to camps and things, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. And so Utah Valley was like the first school that I was like super interested in. So I gave him a call and we kind of just talked basics. And then I talked with my parents and we called two more times. And after that, I committed to come to play to, at UVU. And then ever since then, I've been here and I've been loving it. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So kind of talking about the mental aspect of soccer yeah. and stuff like that, you said you kind of were burned out a little bit. Did mm-hmm. actually... This might sound a little bit bad, but did COVID actually help you with your motivation towards a little bit more? I think it did because, um, you know, there's the saying where it's like you don't realize what you have until you lose it. And for me, I was kind of like, okay, like and before COVID, I kind of had made that decision like, okay, let's do this. And then COVID, I think, intensified that even more because I was like oh, I can't go practice with my team anymore. Like, I can't play games right now. Like, I realized how much I truly loved the game. And um, men- the mental part of, of soccer is for sure a bigger part than you you would realize. And I've definitely come to realize that even in the college level, it's been, it's been challenging to kind of deal with that too. But yeah, for sure. I think COVID definitely kind of pushed me in the right direction of wanting to play college. So, I mean – just kind of think about your sport just from a kind of graphical whatever uh right. you're running you're running miles oh, and yeah. miles oh yeah so if you're not in love with that sport then it's gonna <laughs> be hard yes for sure no it's a tough sport for sure a lot of running <laughs> i wouldn't be doing i can't i i've always told people i could not do cross country i have to have a ball at my feet to do that amount of running <laughs> so absolutely so kind of getting into the Utah state and stuff like that with the recruitment mm-hmm. process. So when it was like the first time you knew this was my place when you were on the campus? So I got recruited very, very late because of COVID and also my burnout. So I didn't ever come um, see the campus until after I graduated senior year. So I came like June and usually players will come in like middle of July to start training for everything. And so I was like, okay, like, let's get like a campus tour set up. And so um, I came up with my dad and we went and met with my head coach and he took us all around campus and met some of the players. Mm -hmm. And as soon as like I walked on campus and kind of just got a feel for it, I was like, this, this place is perfect. And it's meant for me. And I held, I held up for good reasons. So I walked up and I saw everything. And the nice thing about UVU is um, 
you Utah gets snow, obviously, <laughs> in the winter, and I wasn't right. used to that in Arizona. Like, I was not – I'm not a snow person. <laughs> but it was super nice because Utah Valley's campus is, like, has the option where if you needed to stay indoors the whole time, you can. And so it's really nice. But the campus is super pretty. Um, it's modern, but it's also, like, kind of still has, like, a little bit of old – old to it and our our game field is absolutely beautiful like they keep it they keep it very nice and and good so i don't know just walking here and then meeting the players and and then meeting everyone eventually when i first came to um to camp in um in the summer before season started it, i just knew it was the place for me it was perfect so absolutely so kind of talking about your freshman year here yeah. What was kind of the adjustments you had from club soccer to Division One soccer? Yeah, there there was a definitely a few. Um, last freshman year, I would say I really struggled. Um, and going back to that mental aspect, it was more so of the fact that I was just so in my head about performing and not making a mistake and trying to impress the coaches. And so um, – that's something that I really had to push through freshman year um, and that I didn't really get through until really the end of my freshman year and summer. I really worked this um, this last summer on just being confident on the ball and trusting my abilities and also taking in what my coaches are saying, but just trusting in myself. Um, and that's really changed um, the trajectory of how I've been playing and everything this sophomore year. But yeah, I really had to take in the fact that there's it's definitely kind of more of like a job. Um, they're looking for players to get them results because, you know, as a head coach, you need to be doing well and be pushing your team in the right direction. And you're getting funding from the school now. So it's it's definitely a big, um, a big responsibility for um, the head coach. But um, I would say also um, the fact that you are not going to be playing as much as you're used to in club. That was a big um a change for me. Um, usually, I mean, some freshmen can come in and just make a big impact and be playing a lot. But um, a lot of the time, freshmen are kind of trying to come into the program and deal with the mental aspect and kind of figure out how the team works, be um, um, kind of bond with their other teammates and and grow in that way. And so at first, you're not going to get a lot of playing time. Um, last year, I was the only freshman to play at all. And it was maybe limited like five minutes here, 10 minutes there. The most I got, I think, was 20 minutes. And so that really takes a lot to your self-esteem, you know, when you've come from playing club and being one of the best players and playing a bunch and then coming to a program and wanting to do better and wanting to play a lot and you don't get it. And so it just I think it came down to me just being like, OK, put in the hard work, keep trusting um, in the work that you're doing and working on your film and tactics as well as like doing everything I could to put myself in the right positions and learning and just knowing that time time will um, help me get there. So, yeah, that was, I think, a lot of the adjustments that I had to make. And then also, you know, balancing with school as well, because it was a definitely a lot more um, homework and workload than I was expecting. I wasn't I wasn't used to that in high school. So, <laughs> I mean, when you when you're taking ca calculus, you yeah. gotta expect <laughs> as much as you can get. But yeah. but kind of looking at your stats from freshman to now your sophomore mm -hmm. year, you could see a huge improvement just this year alone. Um, yes. So, what is it like scoring your first goal this year? Oh my goodness. It was one of the best moments in my whole entire life. <laughs> um, I remember, I'm going to probably remember that moment for the rest of my life, but um, it's just so amazing to see that all the hard work you put in is, is paying off. And honestly, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, I just scored like me, you know, like I was, I was the person like cheering on my teammates and so happy for our team that we were scoring and doing other things like that but you yourself when you get a score the goal it's the best feeling and I'll remember always it was like raining and the ball came across at the top of the box and I was maybe about like 30 yards out and I just shot it low and hard to the near post and it, it went in and I just like looked and turned to one of my teammates one of my good friends um, Maddie and I just turned and I was just like cheering and super excited and so it was, it was, it was a great moment and definitely one that I will never, never forget. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds like it, but it's kind of going through everything. 
what was the training like? What was the off season like from yeah. freshman to sophomore year? Yeah, I mean, freshman year, I definitely worked hard. But I think um, after playing a, a season, you can kind of really hone in on what the differences um, are from, you know, going from high school and club to college. And so you kind of really have to refine your game a lot more. And so what I kind of did is I still kept up my training. I was doing a lot of sprinting and endurance running. Um, I was also doing um, weightlifting, um, particularly Olympic weightlifting. Um, so I did a lot of that along the, the strength component there. Um, I was also, I also really focused on tactical training because for me, I have, um, I feel like as a player, I have a lot of, um, the speed and, you know, I'm very fit, um, and technical, but my tactical skills, I don't think were exactly where they were supposed to be. And I was needing to maybe spend a little bit more time studying the game. And so I kind of really studied the format, different formations that you play in soccer, the strengths, the weaknesses, um, watching people at my position, taking notes and, and looking at how, um, UVU specifically plays and how I can develop more strengths and develop, um, more of the skills and things that my coach was looking for. So I definitely went in there. And then I also played with um, a semi-pro team um, back home in Arizona to further develop my skills, just get more time on the ball, you know, be confident. And I, I think that really helped me um, make that big jump is just having playing time and being in the game. And um, not my, my coach is, is very intense. <laughs> um, he likes He likes to yell because – he sees the potential and he he knows what he wants. And so sometimes as a freshman, when you feel your coach yelling at you all the time, you think, oh, my goodness, like they hate me. And like, oh, my gosh, like I'm not doing the right thing. But he's just trying to guide me in the right direction. And it was because he cared. But for me to be in a different environment and get more playing time on the ball and develop my skills and be confident and play different positions and different systems, it was able to, um, I think, open my eyes and help me develop in a lot of a lot of different ways. And so this summer I think was definitely huge for me and my coaches definitely noticed it coming in um, training before season started. So, I mean, it was quite a whistle of a program that you were in and yeah. And it sounds like uh, a little bit of a boulder situation over there in uh, Utah. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was it like playing in semi-pro kind of, stuff there and kind of going through and playing against one the best players uh in the country from different right. programs in division one yeah no it was definitely um it was a definitely a great experience um and def i got to play with some of um, some people that so I'm one of my teammates went to LSU, one of them's at Wisconsin. And so it's just great to play with different people at different programs because, you know, playing within your team, you only get a certain amount of people that you play with all the time. And so playing with different players, helping elevate your games in different ways and helping you, you know, develop different skills that way was great. And and facing um, opponents that were also still at a high level is very important. Um, to keep your skills up. And so I think we, we went and played a team over in California. I believe they were called LAFC. And um, they had some people that were playing with um, the national team um, that were younger, but they were very good. And so that team, it really forces you to focus, um, to really push yourself to the limits mm -hmm. physically and also mentally, just staying engaged and staying focused. And so I think that was very important for me to play at a high level and get experience at a high level, um, keeping my skills up and working as I did. Um, yeah, it's it's an invaluable. You can't you can't really get that from just watching films. So that experience was awesome. Absolutely. And we kind of talked about it a little bit off camera, but I'm sure with your guys season the way it's at five mm -hmm. and one with three ties. Yeah. You're probably cited for the West Coast Conference tournament here. Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah, no. Um, I love our our coach, head coach. He makes sure that our preseason before our actual conference play starts, that we play high-level teams so that when we come into our conference, um, not necessarily it's easier, but we know that we've played higher-level teams and that we can face the people in our conference. And so having our only loss be to Alabama this season is is really amazing. Um, and and tying another top 25 ranked team and then beating a top 25 ranked team, um, BYU, that was incredible. So yeah, no, we are, we're very happy. Um, 
with how preseason went, and we're hoping to continue that and, and grow upon that um, in conference play. So we've already had our first two games, and we're doing we're still doing well. We have a win and a tie, and so we're hoping to keep the good momentum going and, and keep growing upon it and pushing ourselves even harder. Absolutely. Uh, so we have this last, uh, last segment called the hot corner. Okay. okay. So we get to know you a little bit more. Okay. Uh, which I don't know why that was a tongue twister. I've said it so many different times. But uh, Isabella, what is your favorite all time go to f- food? Food. Oh my goodness. Um, I would say. I'd say I always get a Chipotle burrito. I feel like that is my happy food. <laughs> I really love getting a burrito. It has steak, um, white rice, and then I get pico, guac, cheese, and lettuce, and black beans. That, that'll that make me happy. And there's also um, this restaurant here in Utah called Aubergine, and I love getting their tri-tip Maduro bowl. It is, those, those two things are one of my, my favorites. I, I love them. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> so what is your like playlist going into a game? Ooh, um, we got a little bit of Drake in there, a little bit of the weekend. Um, I don't know, just just pump up high level songs. I don't know. <laughs> Something that has a good beat. Um really, I'm one of the people on the team that like if I hear any kind of song. I'm the person that's dancing to it, (laughs) no matter what it is. Even elevator music, I find myself dancing. But definitely high level um, with the good beat songs. Anything that, anything that has a good beat, I'm I'm getting down to it and I'm getting ready to go. But I have one song that I like to visualize too. It's called "Let's Get Down to Business," and I just like to close my eyes and just focus and just really feel the beat and just get concentrated there. So, (laughs) absolutely. What's your favorite TikTok dance? Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's too many. Um, man, I do like going on TikTok and just having fun and making fun like little vlogs or stuff with um with our travel and oh, that is that's hard. I don't know. I don't know if I can say I have one. Um I love doing little TikTok dances when I'm with home home with my family and stuff. We did like um I don't know what it's called, but it was one with more of like a, a Spanish music to the background. It was just kind of fun. So I don't know. <laughs> that wasn't much help, but I like I like all of TikTok. <laughs> hey, you could have said any name and I would have been like, yep. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but um, what is like your favorite all time sports movie? Sports movie. Oh, my goodness. Um. I'm trying to remember the one with the football players. Um, what is it called? It's the ones, um, the one where the one guy he gets in a car accident and he can't play, but it's football, and they have, they have like the left side, strong side. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. Um, it's like an older one. It's like a football movie, but it's one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, this is gonna kill me that I can't remember the name. But, you yeah, know, it's a football movie. We watched it with my my family all the time. So I love that one. I'll, I'll try to remember the name, but I'm it's blanking at the moment. Uh, hey, don't feel bad. I've had a couple <laughs> interviews where they're like, remember the Titans is my favorite movie, but could not. Yes, that's it. <laughs> could not remember the name of it. That um, is it. So I, have, like, I could just die the whole movie and not even know the title. But, oh, my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> Hey, don't feel bad. We had a couple <laughs> athletes from the local high school that did the same exact thing. And then we had oh a couple division one athletes that did the exact same thing on here. Okay, so I'm not alone. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, let's see here. What is one of your superstitions before a, ma- a soccer match? Mm, okay. I have a couple. Um, so in our, we have like our little place where I get, we get like, um, our socks and cleats on. It's like this little tent by our fields that we all go sit at. Um, I have to sit in the same chair every time when I come in, when I get before warm up. I have to sit in the same chair. Um, and then also when we warm up, we do this like uh, we warm up on the sideline and we all line up and we run out to cones. I have to be in the same general spot for warm up. So I have to be there. And then 
same thing with also the warm up. I have to be in the same grid when we do a passing drill. There's two different like look grids that we do passing drills in to warm up. I have to be in the same grid and in the same cone every time. <laughs> so those are kind of funny, but that's 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 my thing. <laughs> okay, okay. Same cone, same chair. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> quick question about the chair. So, yes. How do you know it's the same chair? So do you mark it down? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we kind of have it sitting in like an arc and there's it's just on the back wall. And then there's two players that usually show up maybe like a couple minutes before me. And so they're usually sitting there and I sit right in between them. And so I know exactly where it is. And I go sit down right there. <laughs> but absolutely. It's always a pleasure having an athlete of your caliber on here. Thank you Thank for coming you. on. And welcome to Regan's Corner Sports Athletes. Uh, and hopefully we could talk some other time, maybe even in person down the road. Uh, but Indiana, Utah is pretty far. Um, <laughs> but anyway, stay froggy, my friend. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> okay.